Hermina S. asks, What has been the most challenging part of the enlightenment process for you personally? <sighs> then she adds some other stuff about her lessons and uh, um, she's actually, I'll address your issue first because she says for her, it's been learning to think positively because uh, she labels things as negative um, sometimes. And actually, yeah, there's a good analogy for this. Um, the silver lining of a cloud is a very interesting thing because if you can embody what it is to always look for and always gravitate towards the silver lining, then all you're ever doing is focusing on where the bliss is, where the good is, where the light is, where the yin as opposed to the yang is. And um, it gets very addictive because you don't have time to wallow in negative states. And um, that's something, yeah. So for your issue about thinking positively, it's like everything in this physical world has two sides. And so when we create something from the mind, it's got two sides because we're not yet the all. The, well, the all is <laughs> the all is part of everything, of course. But when we create something with our heads, we create duality. And so um, when there's an issue or a concept or some sort of problem, it's always got two sides. And so you can flip it and look at each side and see the perspective and how it was created and la dee da. And so if you follow the silver lining, because there's always a way of thinking about the issue which gives you a reality which you know is is proof for happiness as it were. Say, um, say someone was shocked by someone else, then the silver lining is, um, well, it, it would depend on the situation specifically, but you could be like, okay, so his time was up, um, that man was meant to die, this man was meant to learn the lesson about the shooting, you know, you just all treat it as if everything that happens, here we go, everything that happens, happens to give you a certain perspective. And so we get to choose this perspective. So everything that happens gives us the ability to choose a perspective. And will you choose dark or will you choose light? It's completely up to you. We have choice, we have free will. Which is why um, I think it's beautiful that, um, you know, aliens haven't come down and just ascended us all um, straight away. It's, it's up to us. We get to choose. It's like God as humans gets to see if it can sort itself out. And I think it will. It'll just take a certain amount of time, you know what I mean? But um, then she asked, what is the most challenging part of my enlightenment process? And I decided to not talk about something that I have overcome, but something that I'm in the process of overcoming. And that is when people want me to listen to their ego's problems. Because typically today you'll, you'll find that people want to, I've got this problem and I just want to talk about it and have you listen to me. And all I want to do is show them how to fix their thinking about the subject so that they can overcome it and stop hitting me with negativity and, you know, problems and all this stuff. And so sometimes I'll, like, interrupt their thought patterns or I'll show them how, how their thinking, the old way of being, is um, actually, you know, it's a mute point or it's not worth worrying about. And their ego gets really uppity about that. They feel judged and they hold on to their problems and they call me condescending when I was trying to, you know, help instead of validate their old way of being. So that's what I'm overcoming now. But I've, I've really found power in listening because sometimes you just listen to someone and they'll be like, problem, oh, but this, but, uh, oh, but here's really my solution. And I just wanted to show you that I could do it myself. And you're like, Cool. Want to get some ice cream? <laughs> I hope this helps someone out there. Love and light, my beauties. Mwah.